So you've been looking at the Sony X90L or the Hisense U8K and you're trying to decide which TV has the best picture and overall features. Well, in this video, we're gonna find out. Hey everyone, Tech Steve here. Today we're gonna to talk about the two TVs behind me. We're talking about the Sony X90L, which is on this side, and the Hisense U8K, which is on the other side. Now I will tell you that Hisense uses the model 8K. Doesn't mean that it's 8K resolution. It's just a model number so you guys don't get confused that it is a 4K television. Now I will tell you that both TVs run off the Google operating system. Both of them are pretty snappy, fast, and they have features like hands-free voice command, so you can turn the microphone on and off on either television. Also, both TVs have what they call ATSC 3.0 TV tuner, and this is gonna allow you to get over-the-air content up to 4K with interaction menus when it's available in your area. So with that being said, let's take this A6700, and I'll show you guys the back of the panels. Over here, we have the Sony X90L, and over here, we have the Hisense U8K. Now, if you go to the Sony, one thing I want to show you guys is all the inputs, and you can see that it does have plenty. It has four HDMI, two of them are 60 hertz, and two of them are HDMI 2.1s for up to 120 hertz, plus it has that ATSC TV tuner. Now, the Sony has these speakers here on the side, and this is going to create that surround sound effect. You can see it has this checkerboard finish on the back of it, and here's some of the screw holes so you can mount this TV on the wall. Over here, we're gonna have our power cord input. And I will tell you that the feet on this TV, you can raise the TV up and down, but you cannot put them to the center. Now, if we go over to the Hisense, this TV is a little bit different. As you can see here, we have a subwoofer in the back of it for that bass response. It also has those surround sound tweeters. And on the bottom of it, there's two more speakers. So that's the total of five speakers. Now, unlike the Sony, you cannot raise this TV up and down, but you can put these feet closer, or you can put them over here to make them farther apart. As we go to the other side, this TV does have two 60 hertz HDMI 2.0s and two 144 hertz HDMI 2.1s, plus this one has the ATSC TV tuner as well. On the back of it, we're gonna find some additional inputs and a second USB. And the last thing I wanna show you guys is the screw holes, so you can mount this TV on the wall. And don't worry about hiding the subwoofer because it's omnidirectional when it comes to base response. So there's a look at the back of the TVs and I will tell you that the Hisense do have an advantage because it has that subwoofer and the base response on it is pretty insane and I'll show you that a little bit later on in the video. Now before we get started, I will tell you there's no perfect way to make everyone happy when making videos like this. So I'm gonna show you guys the settings that I use to make sure that I could keep the TVs as equal as possible. For the format, I use 4K SDR and I did use Chroma 444 which is not necessarily available on these TVs, but that's the settings that the Apple TV did allow me to do. Now on the Sony, I chose the cinema mode and I actually turned off anything that would automatically adjust the picture brightness. And on the Hisense, I chose theater night, but there's some other options in there. Again, these are the settings that made the TV looks the most compatible and both TVs are at the default picture brightness as well as the saturation, everything that comes from the factory. Now I did put these TVs through some color tests. So first we checked out the red and it was very similar and similar on the greens. But the interesting thing is when I got over to the blues, it seems like the Hisense still had some contrast available. Next, I want to show you guys the uniformity. And to me, both TVs look very similar. However, I will tell you that the Hisense has more of a charcoal, darker kind of look to it over the Sony. Now for this test, both TVs are very similar. Again, they have different tones. And I will tell you that the Sony is a 10-bit panel and the Hisense is an 8-bit panel with frame rate control. But looking at this demo, they look very similar as far as the artifacts test. Now the Hisense had a few issues with the last year model, the U8H, when it comes to gradient. So I put together this demo so you guys can see a comparison between both TVs. And again, this new U8K is doing a really good job transitioning the colors without creating a lot of artifacts. But the interesting thing on some demos, the Hisense has more saturation and contrast, but when I pause that particular scene with the gradient test, it seems like the Sony definitely had better colors. So it's kind of confusing and it depends on what you're playing is gonna determine the processing. 
But the great thing is Hisense do have this new feature inside the menu so you can smooth out the gradient just in case you've seen any kind of artifacts that you don't want. Now for you movie fans, I want to check out some movies to show you guys the differences between these two TVs. And looking at some of the footage, it's just interesting that sometimes the Sony performs really well and other times the Hisense performs really well. The biggest thing I can tell is that the Sony has this more natural flat look to it where the Hisense has a lot more contrast and a lot more details. But let me show you some examples of what I'm talking about. If you look at this scene, it seems like the Sony has more of a yellow look on the shirt, but the background has more vibrant colors on the Hisense. And you switch over to this scene, which picture looks more natural? And there's another thing called latency. Both of these TVs hooked up exactly the same. But when I play back the footage in slow motion, you can see that the Hisense is loading up the picture much faster than the Sony. But the question is, which is more important to you after watching those demos? Now movies and all that stuff is great, but this is what normal TV looks like on these TVs. And I just can't help but notice that both TVs look very similar. But I will say that the Hisense do have more saturation. And another thing that I noticed is that the Sony looks consistent in the skies where the Hisense look more warm on one side and more whitish on the other side. So that's interesting. And here's a still shot of some trees. And for me, I think both TVs look pretty equal. Now I did check the motion on these tests using 24 frames per second and the Sony definitely outbeats the Hisense overall. It just appeared to be much smoother, but you can make adjustments on both televisions. And I also want to show you guys this skin tone test. And for my eyes, I think the Sony again looks more natural overall. Don't get me wrong, the Hisense is doing a great job, but in this comparison, it just seems like the Sony is edging out and looking more natural than the Hisense. So now that we went over some picture modes, let's get into the audio system. Now on paper, the Hisense has five speakers, the Sony has four speakers, but which one sounds the best? Now after listening to those demos, I can tell you that the Sony is more clear, but if you like bass response, you're definitely going to like the Hisense. Next, let's get into some gaming so we could take a look at the features in both TVs. Now here's the remote control for the Sony as far as the gaming menu. You press and hold down menu and you get this little bar down here. You can change your variable refresh rate, motion blur, black EQ, crosshair, which puts that little dot right there in the center. Plus you can change the types. Now here's the Hisense. If you press the menu button right there, you get this bottom bar and they have a lot more features. And here you can see the frames. You also can see if it's an HDR, variable refresh rate, and you can view the frames per second by turning that on. You get a menu at the top of the screen right here that shows you your frames per second. Then you have dark details, wide, pre-sync, brightness, auto refresh. So you have a lot of options inside of the Hisense right here. Now, another thing I want to show you guys in the Hisense is you have game setting right here. And if you press that, you get this little pop-up where you can change the contrast, the black levels, you can turn on the free sync as well as auto low latency. So it is built for gaming. So you probably wonder which TVs for you? Well, I can say both of them are a great choice and they look very similar. It depends on what you play through it. 
But at the end of the day, do you want a lot of features or do you want something that's been around and very traditional like Sony? The Hisense has mini LED technology, has more local dimming zones for that inky contrast. Plus the Hisense will support up to 144 Hertz if you're planning on hooking it up to a PC that can play those type of frequencies. I will also say that the Hisense is one of those TVs that you get a lot of bang for your buck when it comes to features. Now, on the other hand, Sony, again, is more natural looking to me if you look at every type of signal that you put through it. Plus, it has the built-in Bravia Core calibration, the Netflix calibration, if you use the apps built right into it with the Google operating system. The last thing I wanna let you guys know is that the Hisense does support Alexa where the Sony does not. With that being said, I think either TV is gonna be a great choice, but you can take the demos that I use today and make the best decision for you and your family. I'm Tech Steve. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you guys on the next one. Peace.